Well, uh, thanks so much for being with us here on Morning Live. Now, over four years ago, workers lost their lives when a shaft collapsed at the lily mine in Barberton in Mpumalanga. And this happened in February of 2016. Yesterday, Action SA leader Herman Mashaba announced that he will soon launch legal action to force the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy to retrieve what was an above-ground container, which, when the mine collapsed, ended up about 70 meters underground with about 20,000 tons of mining rubble on top of it. And inside the container with the three lily mine workers. Mashaba has been offering support to the families of the deceased miners to get justice for their loved ones. And it was at a press briefing yesterday that he revealed that following his investigations, the inclusion, uh, conclusion by the department that the container couldn't be recovered was false. So to discuss this further, we join on the line now by um, the president, uh, Joseph Matunjwa, uh, president of, the, uh, of AMCU, and uh, he, that's the Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union. And uh, we will uh, be joined, if he is available, uh, by uh, the uh, NUM spokesperson as well, or rather the president of NUM will join us, um, Mr. Joseph uh, Motitete. But let's start with uh, Mr. Joseph Matunjwa right now. Mr. Matunjwa, thanks so much. Uh, welcome to Morning Live and Happy Heritage Day to you. Hi, good morning. And thank you for inviting us for this interview. Thank you. Ms. Matunjwa, firstly, what do you make of the findings uh, by Mr. Herman Mashaba's team from their investigation? I won't uh, dwell much on Mr. Mashaba's findings uh, because he's a political party. You see the opportunity to grow his political party, of which is what the political parties they do. Uh, they are like vultures at the end of the day. But what we need to focus on is the state itself. There were findings during the inquiry, and then the, the, the findings was very clear that the mine was on the wrong side, of which the question is why the NPA does not persecute the owners of the mine. That's the first point. The second point what is the government doing? The government, it's its full responsibility to recover the container of which we assume that the bodies are in that container. It is not the responsibility of the trade union or any other formations. It's a government. If this government were able to send people to chill, to go and assist when there was, a, I mean, when the workers were trapped underground. What is it with their own people who put them into power? The issue here is the government. Is the government willing or not willing? There is no accountability in this country. You can go, the, the list is endless. Life as the man who was prosecuted, no one was ever prosecuted. You come to Marikana Massacre, who was prosecuted. The, I mean, the loan mean managers, you also were never prosecuted. The list is endless. There is no accountability. And then it shows clearly that the life of a black person in South Africa or in Africa at large is not important, is not valued as compared to other lives of other race. So, Mr. Matundra, as you say, or when you say there's no accountability, how then do we ensure that there is accountability? What needs to be done? What can be done? I mean, we've written letters to the Office of the State President. We've written letters to the DMRE. I mean, but there is no traction. Uh, I mean, there is no response whatsoever. And uh, guess what? The only thing that the government will do best will say, it is not safe to go underground. And once they gave you that answer, you must know that it's the it's it's end of the story. Because they are the regulator. They won't allow any person close to that mine to go and dig and try to find out. And secondly, it needs money. The government won't be prepared to spend money to save the lives or the dignity of a black a worker. I mean, we've seen it. I mean, we've got experience of such things. And today we are saying celebrate heritage. Today is a day that we pronounce the state president to go and dance Jerusalem. Really, can you do such a thing under the circumstances that we are facing in this country? Can't we take this opportunity and reflect 
and do something about saving South Africa from the ashes. Mm. So they've got enough time to go and dance. I mean, they don't have enough time to go and prosecute and do what they're supposed to do about lily mine. So with regard to lily mine and that situation, we were told that that container which as you say contains the bodies of the three mine workers we were told it cannot be retrieved how did government come to that conclusion that it couldn't be retrieved the container can be retrieved i've been there uh, i'd never read from the paper i went uh, 70 meters down underground that container can be retrieved the issue was money the finance who's gonna finance the operation because they had to open a new shaft in order to access the container of which the government won. We said to the government, if this government were able to give Gupta over 600 million rands to, to, to buy optimum, of which now that optimum has caused the livelihood of many South Africans around Mpumalanga Middleburg, so therefore, what is it that they cannot use the very same rehabilitation fund to open that shaft, which by then it, well, it could have cost about 200 million? Uh, I mean, there is funds there. It's just there is no political will. And of course, this has caused a lot of pain and anguish for the families. It's four years on, and, and we know that there's a certain uh, closure that comes with being able to bury a loved one and and these families are still anguished uh, they are still in limbo as it were have you been in contact with them lately not lately but uh, we've been talking with our attorney mr richard spore to see how can we uh, make this government accountable in terms of retrieving the container and also to see to it what sort of compensation uh, that the families can get because the regulator is the state. The state is the custodian. The state is the one that issued the license. And then even with the, uh, what's name, the, the inquiry that we had, I mean, it was clear that the mine, they went and mined the crown pillar, of which was the holding pillar of the mine, because they had a, a good, uh, what's name, uh, a gold, uh, I mean, around that, they call it a crown pillar. So they went and mined the pillar that was holding the mine, of which it's a question now, why Mr. Machesny and the other white managers who were responsible are not prosecuted? Why people who, who are poor are prosecuted? Why black mine workers are being fired and prosecuted? But when it comes to the white senior managers are not prosecuted. Hence, AMCO has been calling the amendments of Mine Health and Safety Act. These managers, this CEO, who are raking millions and millions in bonuses, uh, I, I mean, exploiting all our minerals in the expense of the black life, they must be accountable. And it's a state. Why are they scared to persecute a white manager? Eh? What is it? Are we free? I mean, if this country is run by us, is the government that is elected by us, what is it that stopped them to persecute, I mean, uh, I mean to prosecute, uh, uh, I mean, these uh, companies and these CEOs that are daily killing our brothers and sisters? The case in point is Lily Mine. What stopped the government to, I mean, because the file is before the NPA. They know that whom they must prosecute. What is stopping them? It's because they are white. Huh? If it was a black manager, I'm telling you, he, he will be languishing in jail today. So to that end, and, and you've said that government has been unresponsive uh, through the presidency, through uh, the Department of uh, Mineral Resources. So where to from here because if government is not acting if law enforcement in the form of the npa is not acting what is your next course uh, of recourse really i mean we are limited uh, i mean as, as i'm uh, i've said that we have instructed uh, mr richard spore we can write the letters we can go for litigation but at the end of the day the response for the government to avoid and to run away to be accountable they will say the area is not safe 
And once they pronounce that, you must forget. No one can come closer to that container. They will arrest you. So, there is no political will at the end of the day. Maybe so, we have to go to international court and try to assist because everything that, if it has to work, you must go to, I mean, to Europe. Because we cannot do our own things, I mean, by ourselves. But when the issues are facing them, they are quick to say, Africa, they can solve their own issues by themselves. They don't need any interference. But you cannot even retrieve a container. Huh? The only thing that we can pronounce, go and dance Jerusalem. That's a thing that you can do. So looking at the situation right now, um, those cost estimations for how much it would cost to retrieve that container, uh, what is it standing at right now? And also, if that money were to be raised one way or another, uh, would someone be able to go then after having raised uh, the necessary money and retrieve that container? Yes, indeed. You need a competent people that they can do that work and you need finance. But at this point in time, there is no investor who would come and say, I'm prepared to fork more than 300 million just to retain the container. They will say, we have to start to mine and make money. And thereafter, as we continue mining, then we'll happen to get closer to the container. But the, the, the investor that will come and say, we give you 300 million, go and get a container. I don't think that is possible. No one can put this money around. That's why we say the state itself are the one who is responsible. They can have money. I, I mean... I mean, if we can spend 500 billion in three months in the PPE, I mean, we just wanted only 300 million. Eh? It could have been better spent that 500 billion of the PPE. It could have been something that could have put, uh, I mean, peace in the lives of those families. Under these circumstances, the politicians will come and uh, make uh, and 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 make those and uh, make promises to those f families the promises that will never be realized at the end of the day it will be just more anguish more pain more sorrow that is what is going to happen mm. and listening to you mr matunjo you sound as if uh, you are powerless and defeated as well we're talking now about the dignity of mine workers who died in that container, whose bodies are still um, in the belly of the earth four years on as we speak, the pain of their loved ones. But the, the, the question of human dignity in mining communities is one that has been ongoing. You look at the housing situation, for example, that mine workers have to contend with. Are the unions themselves also defeated at this stage? We cannot say we are defeated. Uh, we are trying, in particular, AMCO. <laughs> no one can find fault with AMCO. We, we fought, uh, um, I mean, the, 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 the economic emancipation of the mine workers. There is no trade union in South Africa and after 1994 that had fought the battles and the war of liberating mine workers in terms of economy, in terms of salaries. It's only the trade union that has fought, I mean, after 1994, of which we brought results. And you'll remember even with the Lily Mine, uh, I made a pledge of my salary. And uh, I invited, I challenged all the ministers, I challenged the government to say, yeah, I am with my little salary, come, let's join hands, let's raise this money to go and retrieve the container. It was only Joseph Matunjwa who put that money. And then when I was about to open the account of which J.J. Tabane, I think, was from 405, he was very much uh, encouraged and he was willing to assist in terms of uh, peering, I mean, this exercise. And then I was threatened that if I open this account under the family, they will sue me. It was a lot of politics around those issues. But I did. That money I put aside because I made a pledge to say my salary, first salary, will be opening the account, the project, to retain the container. But no one had followed. So, so we are not defeated. So we are, is the state that has been defeated. Uh, I mean, the state is a... It, 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 it's captured. When they talk about state capture, 
this is not a state capture with uh, uh, Bob Zondo commission. The state kept, the elephant is in the room. The state is captured by white monopoly capital because they cannot prosecute a white CEO, a white manager. That is a capture. Three of our brothers and sisters are still in the belly of the earth. The state, if we really run South Africa, if the South Africa is for us, I mean, what prevent the state president to say, in my jurisdiction, as an executive power, I direct the MRE to make sure that that container is retrieved. What stop him? Concomitant action was taken in Marikana, a lone mean. 34 mine workers were massacred in the split of, I mean, of a second. So, but they cannot issue the very same concomitant, uh, I mean, action against, I mean, I mean, to retrieve the lily mine. Come on, man. We are a joke. So what is the way forward? Because I think this is not a Joseph Matunjwa question. It's not an Amku question. This is a South African question because this speaks to all of us as a nation in terms of how we treat each other. And I'm sure many people watching this right now would perhaps ag agree and say, yes, we need to do something to retrieve those bodies, even if the state won't do it, even if, if the mind won't do it. Maybe all of us can come together and pledge the little we have to retrieve those bodies. Very encouraging ways indeed. It raise hope. So what I will do again, I'll go back uh, to my notes and say, here's my salary, here's the bank account, I'll come back to you and say, this is the number, whoever is willing to assist to, to put some money in that account uh, of which we'll be trying to retrieve that container, we'll welcome all South African if we can do it ourselves. But at the end of the day, it lies with the DMRE, the regulator is the one who issued the license. We can do that, but those managers must be prosecuted. That license must be taken and then make sure that those who are responsible to kill those three uh, workers must be brought to book. But yes, moving forward, not to be stagnant, not to be frustrated by the system, by this state, which is very much uh, embracing neoliberal economic policies, which they cannot uh, make people to be accountable, especially if you are the white manager, they are scared of white people as much as they were scared before. So therefore, we will encourage all South Africans to come and join hands and uh, to retrieve that container uh, in order to start a new life for those families. We will appreciate that as AMCO. Joseph Matundra, AMCO president, uh, reflecting on the Lily Mine tragedy following Action SA leader Herman Mashaba's statement yesterday, of course. Uh, the container, as Joseph Matunjwa says, as Herman Mashaba said yesterday, as per their investigation, can be retrieved. So what does this mean? Quite a reality check for us here on Heritage Day. Let's take a quick break.